Hi and welcome back to our REACH devotions. I'm Adam and I'm going to be sharing from Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 22. So you might like to grab your Bible and turn to that passage and then click on the link below this video and listen to the worship song there as we turn our hearts towards the Lord. So let's read from Romans 8 verse 22. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for, as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. One of the things I love about these verses is how Paul is real about the pain in the world around us and the pain that we can feel in our own hearts. And yet he is full of hope and encouragement. He describes that pain uh, in the terms of the groanings of labour, of childbirth. And um, we're all too aware, I think, this year of the groanings of creation, the pain of the environment, suffering global warming and all the other effects of what uh, humankind has uh, done in the world. But also the groaning of society around us, the um, different struggles in our communities. And I think each of us individually have been feeling the burden and the weight of this year's pandemic in different ways, but uh, it's certainly a hardship. And Paul says that this pain that we feel, it that won't go on forever, that creation is leaning towards this wonderful moment of rebirth. I've never been in labour, but I know that all that pain uh, and struggle leads to a moment of great joy as there's a new birth and that's what's coming for the whole world and for us as his people he talks about the redemption of our bodies our resurrection bodies our full adoption as sons and daughters as we stand before our father and we see his plans for creation finally worked out in psalm 8 verse 5 and 6 the psalmist answers the question what is mankind what are we here for by saying you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. That's our purpose and that's our destiny as the children of God, to be ruling and reigning with him in creation and in the world. So this is the hope that we have. And Paul says we wait for it with patience. But it's not an inactive waiting because he goes on in verse 26 to describe how the Spirit is helping us to pray. And uh, I think as we feel the pain and, and the struggle that's going on around us, sometimes we don't know what to do with that emotion. And he's saying here, take that, that feeling, that emotion to God in prayer, in prayers of lament, perhaps, of saying, how long, Lord, is this going to go on for? How long until you step in? And sometimes we don't even know the how to pray. We can't find the words, but the Spirit is interceding for us. He's groaning within us. We groan within the world and the Spirit groans within us before the Father. Isn't it good to know that we don't just have Jesus interceding at the right hand of God, but the Spirit is also interceding, bringing what we carry before God and that prayer that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let's take all that we're carrying to him in prayer consistently and full of hope that he hears and he's able to interpret our deep emotions um, into intercession. And then this passage finishes with those famous words about God working all things together for good. Sometimes that can lead us to a rather fatalistic approach to hardship 
But there's um, an alternative translation, which I think is really good in your footnotes, if, if you've got an NIV, that reads like this. We know that in all things, God works together with those who love him to bring about what is good with those who are called according to his purpose. God is working together with us in the world to bring about his purposes. That's why we pray and that's why our prayers need to turn to action because he is able to turn some of these wretched circumstances around for good. So as we go into today, let's do that with full of hope, prayerful, but confident that God is working out his purposes in us and through us. God bless you.